Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We're your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hello and welcome to the I Create Daily podcast, a movement for creators serious about their art. I'm Leora. And I'm Devani. And today we're joined by Carla Sonheim, who is a painter, illustrator, and creativity workshop instructor. Carla is known for her fun and innovative projects and techniques designed to help adult students rediscover a more spontaneous and playful approach to creating. Carla is the author of three instructional art books, including Drawing Lab for Mixed Media Artists, 52 Creative Exercises to Make Drawing Fun, Drawing and Painting, I'm sorry, Drawing and Painting Imaginary Animals, a Mixed Media Workshop, and The Art of Silliness, a creativity book for everyone. In 2012, Carla co-authored Creative Photography Lab with her husband, Steve Sondheim. Steve and Carla offer online classes in drawing, painting, and mixed media with a variety of talented teachers, and we're eager to dive into your story, Carla. So welcome. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What amazing accomplishments. We cannot wait to dive into learning all about how you got started, basically what seems to us, living a life of passion, pursuing your passion to be an artist, to do art in such a big way, creating books and courses and collaborations with other creative artists. So take us back, if you would, to how you began making essentially your passion your living. Okay. Um, Well, I feel like I'm a late bloomer. I, I was really creative when I was young, and I think I took an art class when I was in ninth grade, but then I got I was very sensitive. I got discouraged. So I quit art until I was 29. Um, Mm. So uh, basically another 15 years went by. (laughs) Um, And so then I started drawing and I I really loved it. And by that time I was working in a publishing company um, doing um, like graphic design kind of stuff. Mm. And um, when I I wasn't a very good fit for corporate life. Let's just say that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And so when I was about 38, I just had to quit. And I quit kind of like at the height, like I quit just a few months before I'd be fully vested. I mean, it was really a a, a silly thing to do financially, but I just, I needed to do it. And so from there, I, um, I tried to pursue my art. And I had um, quite a lot of very hard years there. Um, Financially, we'd moved to a small town and and the small town actually was an artist town and it was wonderful in the sense that I was encouraged and um, I had the head space to do art, but um, our financial situation just sort of continued to go downhill (laughs) um, for a while. I only say this because um, it is in some ways, we definitely had the starving artist experience. Um, My husband is also a freelancer. Um, I was a mother and my two boys were, I think around um, 13 and seven at the time, 14 and seven. And I started teaching art in my youngest son's elementary school classrooms. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I found that I was really good at it. Like, well, first of all, Wes was very smart, precocious little guy. And he did not want to be talked down to at all. And I had, um, you know, 30 second graders, but Wes was right there keeping the bar really high. <laughs> and, and so um, I was teaching in his elementary school classes, but trying to keep it fun, but also challenging. Um, and so when I started teaching adults a few years later, I met with this huge resistance to drawing um, mm. from the group that I was in, which was sort of the mixed media world. And, um, and so I taught my drawing classes in the same way, keep it fun, keep it challenging, because we're adults, or we're Wes, <laughs> we, need, we need to learn. But also, um, you know, the idea of drawing a cone, or a, a cube for 
a whole semester was just, or even a whole day, it was just boring to me, you know? So, um, so anyway, that's kind of how I got started teaching. And I have found that I love teaching just as much as I love to make art. It really is a dual uh, passion. Um, and, um, and, and anyway, from there, I, I started teaching adults. And then from there, the book, the first book was was born out of those exercises that I gave the kids and that I gave adults when I first started teaching. Right. Well, that's really cool. And you seem to have a mind that not too many art, it's not as common for many artists to have sort of the business side of it and the teaching side of art. So was that from your publishing background? You already had those publishing connections. So you knew that packaging your knowledge in a book format was a good idea or d what helped you create such a good business out of your art? Because not a lot of creatives can balance the two very well. That's a good question. Um, okay. Well, I'm 55 now. And when the book came out, I would think I was 47. And when I was 46, I was thinking, what the heck have I done with my life? All I've done is split around from one job to another. I got out of college. I went into a law office, quit that. Then I went into um, editorial and um, editing and quit that. <laughs> and then I went into a marketing department at a newspaper as a writer and I quit that. And then when I was 29 and I was getting married, I got a new job at a graphic as a graphic designer assistant um, so I kept starting over like every three years I'm starting over oh brand new you know and um, and then I did a lot of freelancing all that time and so I will say that um, once the online class started coming together about six years ago it my whole career suddenly made sense to me it's like mm -hmm. oh I learned in the law environment that you do not miss a deadline. You know, I learned that in the magazine environment. Mm -hmm. I learned, in, you know, in the editing that, um, you know, less is more, for example. Or, I mean, it just seemed like every job I had has <laughs> been perfect um, mm -hmm. preparation for what I do now, but I didn't know it at the time. And, and honestly, um, until a, a few years ago, really, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> Oh, we love that. Yeah. We see that so often and it has, has paralleled our own experiences mm -hmm. as well. It's such a common thing. Um, we just published an article today, the concept of Seth Godin's concept of just ship it. Don't try to create the perfect business plan. Don't try to create even, yeah. even, even the perfect life plan. You can know where you want to go, you know, yeah. and then head out in that direction on the next most logical thing that you're drawn to do. Um, because it's in the journey that the way becomes more clear yeah. and yeah, there's, there's no way that we could, any of us could have planned all the little mm -hmm. things along the way that got us to where we are now and that prepared us for where you are now. So yeah, that's, that's a wonderful yeah. example. Yeah. And uh, working at the magazine really um, to tie in with your Seth Godin comment, uh, you work as hard as you can, as, as much as you can to get it right. And then the deadline is upon you and you have to let it go. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think that that, uh, that training has served me pretty well. Meaning, um, also I learned that I'm very deadline oriented. So I don't do anything without a deadline. So, you know, all these things, all those jobs helped me try to figure out who I was and and so now I've created the business we have now based on who I am <laughs> so it gets done <laughs> really awesome you, you just creating the business around who you are but then you're very deadline centric which segues into the perfect uh next question of what are your daily creative habits for both your artistic creativity and everything else you're doing um well I, I live kind of a quiet life these days, um, meaning I, I mean, we do have teachers come to film and that, that season is coming upon us uh, very soon. Um, and then my days get more interrupted. But when I'm having my longer stretch of, you know, planning and quiet, um, I get up, I, I do try to write every, every morning a little bit. Um, sometimes something catches and I'll write longer than other times. Um, and then my husband sleeps in a little later. He's a full partner in this and very, um, I, 
everything that we're doing is really because of him. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's, <clears throat> it's, it's a full partnership. It's, I, I feel bad that his name isn't on there too. <laughs> but um, so then he, he sleeps in a little later. So we get up, have breakfast and have kind of a business meeting. And so that can last anywhere from a half hour to an hour and a half. Um, and we, uh, you know, it's not even called a business meeting, but we probably make more decisions during that hour than any other, <laughs> any other time. And then we separate, he, he's downstairs in an office. I'm up um, in a bedroom on the top floor. And, um, and then basically I just do the next most important thing. Um, and I also try not to make too many important things happen on the same day. <laughs> <laughs> so for example I need to film a few classes and I had scheduled to do it today but we also have to get out um, another artist uh, class and so we decided that I would film tomorrow and and just focus on the class getting the artist class up today so um, and I learned that in college um, when I I would always go into all my finals with like an A or an A minus and I would come out with a B minus. I, I would get a B minus in my grade or a B. <laughs> and it's because I would, I would mess up the finals because they were all bundled on top of each other. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but there'd be like three finals in one day. And then, you know, and I wasn't confident enough at the time to ask the teachers to spread it out. But now I, I make it so that I spread my deadlines out so that I don't um, set myself up for failure. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a lot of awareness of your own schedule and lifestyle and, uh, you know, balancing what the business needs versus what you can actually do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you look at your, do you set goals um, or just deadlines? Do you, or do you look at your deadlines as goals? Well, the deadlines, well, the deadlines seem to be, uh, need to be outwardly, uh, <laughs> uh, they seem to need to be, um, from someone other than just myself and my husband. So for example, uh, the online classes, people have paid for the class, it has to go up on time. <laughs> or uh, we have uh, one assistant that's helping us, you know, Harry needs something at a certain time. We'll do something much more on deadline for Harry than we will our own mm -hmm. deadlines. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry, I, I forgot your question. <laughs> oh, the goals, the goals and the, uh, the thing. I do write down goals, but then they get met, they get lost in my notebooks, and I never I see them years later. So, and then I think, oh, hey, I made that goal, but I don't I don't have it pinned anywhere or um, or or anything like that. Um, uh, I think my husband is. We've never really had a formal business plan either. Um, again, not that kind of person, um, and we really oh this might be kind of important um five years ago when my husband came on and really wanted to build the online class business with teachers and everything um i hesitated for about a year and the reason was i i have clinical depression and i wasn't sure that i would be up to it some days meaning some days i just couldn't work the same way that i could work other days and to involve other other people in that felt very scary to me. Um, but I've gotten very managed in that way. I have good doctors and, and um, I had a thyroid issue that's now been managed in a good way. So that has kind of gone away. I've almost forgotten that that was even a fear, but I, I just wanted to throw that out there as part of what's built the business is it's always been in a way, kind of uh, needing to be flexible enough to deal with a day that I'm going to be down, mm -hmm. sure. down to the count. <laughs> um, There's so much in your story that so many in our audience can relate to um, because like from where you started to where you are now and everything in between, we have people in the audience every, that are everywhere in between. Um, and so if you had it to do over, would you have left your job before you were like prospering on your side gig, you know, as an artist. And I know that this isn't to, because we know that everything that's happened has led you to where you are now. Yeah. In a way. So it's more like advice for um, artists who may be where you are now or where you were then. And that is wanting to earn a living from the things that they're more passionate about. Um, and, and yet 
you know, not wanting to take the leap of no income, you know, and then go through that, that the strain of those years, you know, like you said, the starving artist years. So what would be your advice then? To um, well, I think that my advice would be the same advice I give to people who want to draw and everything, which is we all have our own unique voice and personality and ways of dealing with the world. And there's in some way, no way that I can tell a person what they should do in that manner. They have to know it for themselves. And um, the only thing I can tell them is that um, it's always scary no matter what. I mean, when I, when I walked in to quit at, my job and it was a good job <laughs> my boss goes what are you guys gonna do and I said I don't know <laughs> but I had to do it you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, it's never easy and it's never not scary you're never gonna get to that point so um, and even now we've been in the black now for what eight years and I still am a little bit like oh you know do we have enough do we have enough is everything enough so I think that there's never really ever going to be enough. <laughs> and if it, at one point the pain of not doing it overwhelms the pain of staying in your job, then it's time mm -hmm. to make the jump. And mm -hmm. it's never going to be a, a, a thing that's not scary. Um, Good point. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense too. Well, and you know, the other part of the thing you mentioned about the depression, I'm glad you mentioned that too, though, because you know, I'm glad you touched on the struggles of the starving artists. I'm glad you touched on the, the experience of the depression because many creatives go through that, you mm -hmm. know, um, those dips or those, and, and you know, sometimes it's, it's like physical, chemical, um, um, unknown or unidentified oftentimes. And sometimes it's perhaps being off track with what they really feel like they're here to do, you know, and that, or, and sometimes it's a combination which layers it then and makes mm -hmm. it more challenging. So um, how is like, where, where do you want to go with your art? Now you've got books out, you've got classes and courses, you love teaching. Um, you've done so much. You've built out, you get to work with your husband. You're like, what a fantastic, <laughs> you, I wish we'd known we would have had you both on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because what it sounds like, so, so let me get back up to a clear question. Um, it sounds like you're the artist and he's more of the business mindset of it, like creating the business systems and structures. Yes. Um, well, he's a commercial photographer by trade. So he's, been, he's spent the last 30 years um, being a professional photographer. And so um, when I, I, I had started my first online class in 2010 with just PDFs, so there was no video. But then in 2011, I'm like, honey, I want to do a video thing. Will you set me up with a thing? And, da, da, da. and he's like, he goes, no, um, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. <laughs> and, um, and then there was two years of fighting <laughs> because he wanted me to storyboard my whole class and he wanted me to do all these things. And, and it took him a while to realize who I was and, and who we were together. And, um, and now we work without a fight almost ever. We never fight anymore, but, um, but anyway, he, he was the one that's like, no, we're going to do it right. You know, we're going to do it right. And so, um, he has, um, uh, taught himself, uh, the, the extension of photography, which is the audio and the moving cameras, video yeah. and um, editing. And then also he's taken on the business role and he's, um, he's a big thinker. You know, he's a, he's a idea guy. I am too, but I'm also all those jobs. I had secretary at a law office and, and um, copy editor and everything. Um, I know how to do the details. Mm -hmm pretty well. Um, and, and so we are a good team. I, I think we're probably a really good team. I, you know, um, when we're fighting, I don't feel that way, but that's pretty rare <laughs> now. <laughs> what, what advice do you have for anybody else or maybe not advice, but thoughts or tips or whatever for anybody else who wants, they want to collaborate and work with or bring a partner on, whether it's their husband, a family member, uh, a friend, whoever it is to um, sort of figure out and s section off like the roles <laughs> we're going to have or all that. So everything runs smoothly. Well, I do think there's growing pains, you know, um, and I think it took a long time for me to trust my husband that he was good at certain things. And it took a lot, a, a lot of time for him to trust that I knew my market and, um, 
you know, I would say things like, you know, oh, that's, that's not going to work. And he'd say, why? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and he goes, well, let's just try it. And so then we try it and it didn't work. <laughs> and that happened enough times where he's like, okay, I think I'll listen to Carla's gut, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't think that it's really something that you can, you know, plan out. It's almost like a doing thing. And the main thing is that you just like and respect the person, uh, yeah, right. really like them. Yeah. And then, respect them but there's going to be times where it takes a while to get that up to the speed it should be <laughs> um but um as long as you can i mean it's like any relationship as long as it's more positive than negative then you're in good you're in good shape <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. that makes sense so tell us more about your art um so what do you spend most of your days doing between writing books um creating courses and doing your own like <clears throat> your own art mm -hmm. um what what are the things that you spend most of your time doing well um the last three years i've been spending most of my time four years five years um teaching online, like a year long online class, which has really kept me very busy. And, um, and so all the artwork I've created in the last five years, most of it has been towards an online class. Um, and so there's, there's both um, uh, a great thing, like, like all life, right? It's both great. Um, I've been kind of the jack of all trades the last five years. I do all kinds of different things. I've been experimenting a lot. I've come up with a lot of cool projects and things. Um, the downside of it is you, you start to feel that you don't have a body of work um, or that nothing hangs together. Um, and so I've been longing for that. Like I just kind of want to swing the pendulum a little bit more that way. Um, and I've also been wanting to write another book. It's been five years now. Um, I'm I'm interested possibly in doing another how-to book like I did, but I think I'm more interested in either talking about creativity in general um, and or doing more like a graphic memoir kind of creative type book that's more personal. Um, and so we have, um, Steve has been, uh, it's been a long plan but he's working on getting me more freed up to be able to do those projects and and so now this year i am doing a year-long class but it's with two other teachers so i have the first quarter and then they have the the rest of the year so i'll be able to take some time to to work on those nice now when you do a course year-long course is that um is that like one one session a week is that it, de like, it depends on the class. This one is once every two weeks, but we do have a Facebook group where people are posting all the time. And I try to comment on everything uploaded. So it, it's quite a big chunk of my day, but it's an enjoyable part because yeah, yeah. it, it's seeing everybody. Um, yeah. Definitely. Um, so, <clears throat> so then uh, do you, you go through the course the year long, is it, um, is it live? in the in the initial and then you re record them and then perpetuate those courses or how does that work um we film them a few weeks before each lesson goes up so for example um we just put up our first lesson a few days ago and i had filmed that um a month ago and then tomorrow i'm going to film the rest of the class so we we're we're working a couple of months a month or so ahead mm -hmm. um and that's the same with the teachers and everything um that's so it's not live, it's, it's videotaped ahead of time, edited, but then it gets released on a certain day. So, um, With your teachers, are they all, are you guys filming? Like they're coming to you and you're filming them with their process, are you cool? Yeah, that's kind of our brand. Um, there's lots of different types of ways to do online classes and a lot of my competitors will, uh let um their students film with their iphones and and have it be a little rougher um our our brand i guess you would say is is a more a little bit more finished um and professional videotaping and audio um and um we try to keep it fun and try to keep it real but um the the it's always so frustrating isn't it when you can't see what's happening or you can't hear what's happening right. and so um it's kind of like that's a, our baseline like we we like to keep control of that well especially since it's visual art yeah. so you you kind of have to have really clear good 
visuals. Yeah. For the best experience for your, your audience. But then once you've filmed it and released it, then that course stays there in, in per perpetuity, right? Yes, and people have access forever, and also people can purchase it as a self-study. And so it's kind of like a, a publishing company where we have a backlist of, you know, classes. So instead of a book backlist, we have a classes backlist. Yeah, that's yeah. so important for artists because that's one of the most challenging things for creatives, especially that create individual pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is how to leverage your time and amplify it in order to make it so that you can do that for a living and make more art and be in the black and not a starving artist. Right. So you've definitely, you know, between books and courses, you know, it's, that's such an important thing for all creatives to consider. So yes. it's great that you're doing it that way. And it's amazing. Uh, we've interviewed uh, several artists and now you as well, how many of uh, successful ones are diverse in, what they offer as an artist. So courses we interviewed so, uh, about a month or so ago, another artist who also loved doing workshops and hers are all live workshops, mm -hmm. but it's still like spreading out. Like once you develop yourself as an artist and your work and stuff, then realizing you can do other things. Like you can package your art in different ways and different courses and become a teacher and help others too. And that yeah. can be part of your business. Yeah. When I was starting out, um, I definitely diversified. You know, I had an Etsy store, I was teaching, I was trying to sell in some galleries, I was doing some shows. Um, you know, I, you, it's, it's a good idea. And then um, we, we've been a little more focused recently, but it's only, uh, it's, it, I think it had to happen that way. And when we first started doing online classes, we didn't just quit everything and do online classes either. Um, that was just part of one of my many diverse things. And then my husband was doing photography at the time, um, full time. And um, one reason we chose to go my direction rather than his direction is that backlist and that possibility to kind of, I don't know, build something that we can have later on rather than Steve going, shooting, and then getting paid, and then that's it. Right. Um, now it's like we, we do the work, we get paid, but then we might get paid a little bit more later, too. <laughs> so, so really, you know, what you're building is you're growing your body of work in the world in such a way that not only is it um, supporting you now, but you're building and expanding your own retirement, you know, so... We, it's, we hope know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we can imagine, because again, like you said, you're in your 50s and, you know, you've had many years to uh, accumulate a wonderful body of work. Um, and so that that's part of the process. It's not an overnight thing. And like you said, it went you went through many hard years as well as a part of that. Um, but being aware. So it's sort of like if someone is interested in earning a living from their art, but not really committed, then it may not be, then it may need to continue being a hobby uh, until it is that it's important enough for them to go through the challenging parts to and commit to it, because that's what it's gonna take, because it's not an easy road. You know, it's very rarely ever an easy journey. And I, and I would add to that that um, uh, working at a corporate office wasn't an easy road for me either. Yeah. So, um, and even during our worst times, and there were some bad ones, uh, we always were happy that we did what we did because yes. um, we, we were able to have our own schedule and we were able to take a nap <laughs> if that's what was needed. Yeah. And, um, and we've been really, really grateful. And um, no, it wasn't easy, but I don't think living, working in a place that you're not happy is easy either. No, <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah, it's so important. Yeah. Um, I think we so can- you have to pick your heart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have to pick your heart. That's a good one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So could talk a little bit more about, you, you were talking about you really like to and want to work on talking about, teaching about writing more about creativity in general. Could you elaborate on that? Well, I, I have found that um, my art practice, creativity practice, drawing um, is sort of the way in which I understand my world. Um, it, it's the conduit with which I live. And um, I've, I've learned through drawing, for example, that every day you feel just a little bit different. Or um, one day you're totally on and you 
um, you can hit it and then the next day you just you're just hopeless um, I've learned that some drawings are most drawings I do are just kind of yeah <laughs> some of them really hit it and a lot and some of them are horrible like um, <laughs> I had already written the book and my son was in high school and um, I was trying to draw our cat and he walked by and he goes you're a bad drawer <laughs> and he walked by <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? He's right. Today, I really am a bad drawer. And, and so that's how I feel like my life is, too. Some days, I'm, it's, it's good to be around people. And other days, it's hard to be around people. And other days, it's like the only thing I ever want to do. And I mean, that's just one example of how, how um, I, I find all these parallels when, yeah. um, when I'm drawing or painting or creating and who I am and the way I live my life. So I guess I just want to expand on that. Um, try to expand on that. Yeah. No, yeah. Like the next chapter, it makes, or even the next book on that uh, aspect chapters. of your life. Yeah. You mentioned your son. And I'm glad because I wanted to ask are your, you said two sons, right? Yes. Are either of them artists today? They're both very artistic. My, um, my oldest son, is a high school teacher and he's very creative within that role. Um, I do think he has an interest in drawing, but I don't know that he understands what I do very much. He's more of a, um, he's more of the average kind or the, the sort of the way that art schools have been teaching all these years kind of guy he, that fits him. Whereas I think with me, he just, he, I think he kind of just cocks his head like, really? <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> You're able to sell a class that does that. Um, I, I I hope that that's. I hope that if he sees this, he doesn't get his feelings hurt. But, um, and then my other son, he's also very artistic. He's more well. He's creative in many ways, but um, he's trying to find his. He's just graduated from college, and he's interested in um, being an archivist. And um, but he is also very creative. But neither of them have sort of gone the art path um at least not yet <laughs> that makes sense now i you it's such a good point about the traditional education art education versus what you may be doing and versus what's available to be done and and taken and enjoyed online um and you know and so your son can catch on to this too it's like that's that's the world of education today. So the world of education is shifting from the formal, stiff, got to be this way academic mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. to, Almost a corporate approach, which is that's right. really hard yeah. when it comes to art, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, it, well, it can be. Uh, yeah. Some people make it work and enjoy it, but... Yeah. But it has its place. I mean, yeah. again, it's so much of it is about it's exactly this way. It's a formal kind of training and it's a, you know, it's a lot about art history and that sort of thing as well, which again has its place. Mm -hmm. uh, but many creative artists, you know, I think almost by definition, we don't fit a mold mm -hmm. and most of us are not corporate, you know, and the ones who are, um, are more likely to be the graphic designers or the marketing, you know, the creatives coming up with brilliant marketing campaigns kind of thing. And then they can fit their creativity within that structure. But yeah, yeah I mean, no, totally. The education of today, it's so much like, it's really it's about networking, not networking is the wrong word, um, interfacing, connecting mm -hmm. more directly with your audience and what you know that they want by virtue of the questions they're asking you in your Facebook group and the conversations that you have with them. And then you create a class that basically speaks to that and answers exactly what they need to know for where it is that they are. Or you've got a teacher who knows the answers to those specific questions that and then you've created a collaboration with somebody else who's also creative in a different way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Is that, so that's, is that pretty much how it's working for you? You're creating your course, courses around the things that not only, of course, you, you know, or your connections, your collaborative um, artists know, but that speak to, that respond to what you're hearing from your audience. I think on a subconscious level, I do that. Um, I think, probably the uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit more true is I do what I'm working through at the moment. I teach what I'm working through at the moment. And then I happen to catch a lot of people that are also going through that, you know, and um, in a way um, 
this is kind of a gross analogy, but you know how women who live together, their, their menstrual cycles kind of go uh, on the same routine. Well, if people are taking my classes and we spend one year doing this and that, and we're trying sculpture and we're trying this, well, I tend to crave a little bit more like, okay, let's work on a body of work now. Mm -hmm. And, and so then I, I, I develop a class not because somebody has told me they want it, but because I'm feeling that way. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the people who've taken the, the crazy class are like, yeah, I'm feeling that way too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it seems like it is kind of symbiotic, but I think it's more me selfishly doing what I, um, I, I can't come up with just a class that I'm not sure. into. Yeah. Um, and if I did, it would seem fake. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I think I, I, I'm pretty confident now that if I just, do what I feel, I might catch a few people along sure. the way. <laughs> that makes sense. And I think that, you know, because then you're going to attract the people that, like you said, who are working in a similar area, you know, in a similar flow or stream of consciousness at that period of time. Um, and you guys can do it together. So that makes a lot of sense. So do you have like a long list of the courses and the things that you, areas that you want to work in? Or do they sort of come spontaneously a little bit before the next one kind of thing more like that <clears throat> um more more spontaneously um uh yeah sorry um right. i'm just trying to think like i have no idea what i would teach next um i am looking at a, a little bit of a break and that's the first time in a, a, a long time and um I'm very excited because I've been, I've just been dying to get back into um, doing another book or two. Okay. <laughs> so, so do you have your next, so do you have your next book or two planned? Like you have an idea of what you want to write about and, about and illustrate in your next books? Um, they're starting to come together. Um, I, I, last year I was trying to work on this too while still having my full teaching schedule. And um, I thought, I'll just write down every idea I have, like all the children's books ideas, all the, you know, comic book ideas, all the da da da. And um, I think I had, I stopped at 48. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know how, what it's gonna be. Like, it seemed like none of the ideas were good enough to be their own books, but maybe I'll combine them in some way, I don't know. So I think I just need, and I'm, I'm taking, starting to take the time to really pull through all my material and organize it basically yeah yeah and then they'll come together from there some of them will end up be merging probably yeah. and some of them will be yeah. uh you know a genre unto itself yeah, yeah. well that's exciting and yes. that'll be exciting creating your new books um one of the things i was going to ask you mentioned earlier also that early on you sold on etsy are you still selling on etsy it's funny i have an etsy site and um no, I'm not selling anything on Etsy. Um, but now it doesn't have anything on there because I've just let it go because I wasn't selling anything. Um, and um, I think in some ways you can't do too many things really well. And when I was selling a lot on Etsy, that was the only thing I was doing. I was in the forums. I was relisting all the time. I was really uh, dedicated um, to it. And, um, and now since most of my attention's with the online classes, I just, I've let it go. And so there's been no sales. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, the other thing is I, I've been doing a lot of different kind of artwork and um, it's, it's hard to get myself in the headspace to decide what I'm gonna sell and what I'm gonna keep. Um, and I've, I've realized lately that part of my problem is the stuff that isn't good enough, I don't wanna sell. And the stuff that is good enough, I don't want to let go of. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> and, so, um, and so then I think, well, maybe I should put these in books and then leave it at that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So are you selling your artwork or um, renditions of your art on something, you know, whether it's, you know, like prints or um, pillows, you know, cushions like you can do on Etsy? Are you selling them anywhere? Then. Not really, not anymore. Um, I, I think there's a few, you know, things out there that from older agreements and things. Um, but uh, when I was really doing it, I had my series of girls that I was working on. And um, 
finally, one day I just was done making girls and that was the, that was that, even though they do come back, but not in quite the same, in the same way. And like I said, I just haven't felt like I've had a consistent enough body of work to even come up with like even a series to try to get fabric or, or anything, you know? Um, and I used to be an art director and I know that having a consistent body of work is very helpful to the buyers because they, they yeah. know what they're going to get. And um, not that it's keeping me from trying. It's just, I want to feel good about any submissions I have. And it seems like I have series of two. <laughs> I do too good of this and too good of that and too good. Of that. And then, you know, and then I'm on to the next thing. So um, we'll see if 2019 can help me uh, focus a little more. <laughs> and and uh, creating the courses and work that you've been doing takes a lot of energy. So it's mm -hmm. like, like you were saying before, it's really hard to make every aspect of your business the full-time job. And yeah. so you just kind of have to hone in on what you're called to do at the, at the time right. or the several years commitment of getting it yeah. going. And it does seem like my job changes every three or four years. It just mm -hmm. kind of morphs and changes into something a little different. So yeah, that makes sense. So in your 2019 is the year of the collage. Tell yeah. us about that. Well, um, I love to draw, but I also love collage. And um, uh, I haven't been doing a lot of it lately uh, for some reason. And so again, it's kind of like this, you know, a vacuum kind of was created. And so I really wanted to do more collage, but I also wasn't a hundred percent sure that I could handle a full year doing it myself. And so I turned to two of our other teachers, Lynn Whipple and Anne-Marie Gergich, who are both, um, far more accomplished collage artists than I am. Um, and they are teaching each a third of the class. So um, it's, it's been really great. Um, it's wonderful going into the year. No, you know, just with, well, knowing that I'm going to be fed, you know, myself when, when their classes come. And, um, and so it, it's, it's exciting. We change our year long structure pretty much every year. And this is the first time we're trying the three teacher approach mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll see how it goes, but so far so good. Well, that's, and so, and this is a question that may, you may only share, of course, whatever you're comfortable sharing, but setting up a structure, a collaborative structure and payment thing is not a simple process. Mm -hmm. You, it would be sort of like, having a gallery store um, and you you have all the overhead, you have all the systems, you have created the infrastructure and, and the presence online to get found and the marketing and all of that. And the um, audience. And the audience. And so is there anything you can share about how you guys arrived at um, how to collaborate with fellow creatives and artist teachers? Art teachers? Um, trial and error. <laughs> and um, I had come from being a, uh, I mean, when we started, I was only a few years from not from being in the red, you know, basically. And um, so we wanted to be very generous with our artists. And um, so we we basically paid them a little more than we needed to I mean, They loved it, but we <laughs> we couldn't sustain it. So we had to sort of adjust um, a, a few years in and um, meaning we. we we didn't do the hard work of, or we didn't hire a business guy to come and help us figure out what we needed. Um, so we ended up a little bit overpaying, but um, in a way I'm, I'm not unhappy about that because we've adjusted, we've learned our lesson and the people that got the money were artists who needed money rather than, you know, <laughs> so you learn one way or the other and you have to pay for it one way or the other. So, so my basic answer is it was trial and error. We made mistakes. Um, I feel good that we made mistakes airing on the artist side. Um, and it was a little bit of a tough time to, to, to pull back, um, when we did, but everybody understood and, um, and now we're viable. <laughs> so. Sure. Sure. Well, how do you, are, are you using any kind of software to help you track, um, the, the sales and then the compensation, like for instance, affiliate marketing is a thing where some people might by virtue of referring your courses, receive a, a revenue as a commission for referrals. Should you have that set up, which I don't <clears> think <throat> you do, but, um, and then there's another kind of structure for teachers. So are you using any kind of systems or you guys are just all manually figuring 
that out and making the agreement with your teachers ahead of time? We make the agreement with our teachers and then our son, Wes, is, um, he, he built a, basically a, a system. And so it tracks everything. It tracks um, what, what the teacher percentage is, how many classes they've sold. If the class sells at a discount for any reason, that's all automatically. I mean, my husband does the accounting and he has, spends a lot of time doing it, but it's within this system that we had built. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. So a family that working together too. That's <laughs> Nice. We try not to, it's more like on a freelance basis and, um, and we try not to, I mean, we would love it if both of them could work for us, but um, probably we're going to not, not have it for their sake. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never know what's down the road, right? You know, as they, as they continue with their growth and evolution, they may come back to their roots, their creative roots. You never know, right? <laughs> Well, this is wonderful learning and sharing. Is there anything, any kind like your art, how would you describe your art basically? I know you said you don't feel like you have any particular body of work and I can appreciate how that's really served you as an art teacher because that means that you know some things about a lot of different kinds of work and it makes sense then that you would have a lot of different mm -hmm. Uh, types and styles and that sort of thing. And not want to be boxed into no, being known for a specific thing. Yeah, but if you were to describe what kind of artist you are then in general, do you have that, a description for that? Like somebody listening to the podcast, for instance, and not seeing your website because they're in the car, how would you describe your art to them? Um, well, it's fairly maybe simple and whimsical, almost childlike, um, and, but it might be a, a, a child that's majorly depressed, <laughs> meaning none of my animals are smiling. They all look a little grumpy. All the people, if you look closely, they're not smiling. Um, we, it's not that I, I, I run around, you know, unhappy all the time. It, it's more like I'm, I'm catching my characters in the time when they're just alone in a room and they're not showing off for anybody or having to, to, or they're thinking, I guess basically that's it. They're thinking, you know, the animal's like, gosh, darn it. <laughs> what oh. the heck? <laughs> and, you know, the little girl's like, really? I didn't know that. And, and stuff like that. So um, I do have, yeah, I do have people uh, say things like, you know, my five-year-old could do this. And I try to take that as a compliment um, because I love children's art so much. <laughs> You know, but it's, it's whimsical is the perfect word that came to mind for me as well. And I would say, you know, so it's not like necessarily smiling, but they do have expressions, yeah. you know, and there's, there's things going on. There are things going on, you know, that's intriguing and that's captivating. So I love that. And in fact, you do also, by the way, you do have an, I saw somewhere you had an online course for children as well, right? We have a free kids art week every, every year. So we've done it four years. So there's now, I think, uh, 20, 20 free lessons that people can, can access. Yeah. And you have a section on your website, which is carlasonheim.com, which we will link to, of course. So you have a section for mm -hmm. free stuff. And your, um, your most recent course, your collage course, I think it has started on the 8th of January. At the time we're recording this, it's the 10th. And this will probably air in a couple of weeks. So what's, is it too late if someone comes in like after the class has started, should they wait for the next one or should they, is there? No, it's never too late. Um, jump in. It's kind of like uh, maybe going to the beach on any certain day, you know, you come in and, and you join the party where they are. And yeah. then, you know, if you want, you can go visit the sandcastles that other people have made um, <laughs> earlier in the day. Yeah. But um, no, it, it's rolling registration all year long. You have forever access to the videos and material. So on your own time, if you come in late, you can on your own time schedule, go back to the earlier lessons. So um, it'll be up for sale probably from, from now until, until whenever. Okay, fantastic. Awesome. Do you have any other questions for now? No, well, I really enjoyed this morning going through your ink figures video. That was fun. That was like the first video I watched. And that was awesome. And your site is just, again, your site is lovely and whimsical. I mean, even down to your social icons, which are very, it looks like, it looks like a little bit of your own art, you know, your Facebook buttons and all of that. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you like custom create that? Yeah, I, I, 
I think I, it was collage. <laughs> I think I just made it a little collage, scanned it in and then put the type on top. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Great. And so, and people will, so we'll link to your site. Um, and also your, you have a Facebook page. People will be able to find that from your site as well as your other social things. So thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us and sharing your story, um, your wonderful creator's journey. And just, we can't wait to see how it continues to grow and evolve. And thank you for having me. It's been a delightful, a delightful 45 minutes hour. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.